<laughs> At that point, after removing the top, removing the door, we came to the interior of the car. We had to remove the left back front seat. And we cut that at this point here and here. At this time, we decided that uh, we had limited space to, to make a, a proper extrication of the victim in the back of the car. Uh, the car had struck a tree sideways, and the tree was literally positioned in the center of the vehicle. Uh, the captain of the rescue unit felt that it, perhaps it may be better to use the rescue unit's winch, which is positioned on the front of the vehicle, to remove the vehicle from the tree to put the vehicle in a position where we had more room to work on the extrication problem. At this point, we had a member of truck 13 attempt to open the hood on the vehicle to disconnect the battery cables. However, with the condition of the vehicle, the hood had to be forcibly opened with a claw bar. And when the firefighter attempted to open the hood, uh, it caused a lot of movement and discomfort to the victim and at this time it was decided not to forcibly open the hood, just leave the hood intact. We had the firefighter stand by with a CO2 extinguisher and we also had an engine crew member on engine 17 standing by with a charged hose line. We were aware that the electrical system was intact. We didn't feel at this time that it was necessary to disconnect the electrical system because our primary concern was looking for it to be a possible hazard to fire. We weren't looking for airbags at this time. I knelt down into the right front cushion. The console area being pretty well crushed in itself, it just took some minor hand tools to remove all the, the plastic outer components of the uh, console area. We removed the lid the inner basket, and the actual console housing itself. That left exposed uh, a wiring harness and the hump, which gave me access between the seat cushion and the hump. I came around this side because that side of the vehicle was fairly crowded. The tree being in my way, so this is as close as I could get was to reach into here and with each attempt he'd break some plastics and, and other parts off the seat and the console so I was attempting to help clear uh, the path for him to get a better vision on what he was doing. Upon spreading the spreaders I made four or five attempts at a point below a metal box which was sitting right on top of the hump. Four or five attempts they had spread and moved the area a little bit, still not allowing enough room to remove the victim's feet. Uh, the medics cut his shoe off, hoping to slide his feet out from the shoe. That apparently not working. We made another attempt to spread it with the AMCA spreaders. At that point, as I spread the jaws, they came up into the side of the metal box. There was a sudden, tremendous explosion. I felt myself ejected from the car, violently propelled from the car as a matter of fact, landing on my back. At that point I had no idea what happened, whether the tool had blown up, the car itself had blown up. Um, I never lost consciousness, but I became tremendously disoriented and I experienced pain on my right side from my waist all the way up to uh, the right side of my forehead. Tom was operating the tool in there and I was leaned over in this position uh, as he's operating it, waiting to see if I can clear out more debris. And uh, when he struck the box, this airbag deployed here out of the, out of the uh, steering wheel, catching me in the ch upper chest and face and uh, kind of staggering me backwards. At the time I was struck, I didn't know exactly what had happened. All I know is that I, f I felt something, heard a loud explosion, felt something hit my chase, face and chest, and then I couldn't breathe. And so I didn't know if this was it or just exactly what had happened. Oh my God, two of them are down, two of them are down, two of them are down. 